today is a really big day for us. First of all, it is so crazy to think that these decals, these YMCA decals that we're taking off, were put on in 2004, which is the year of when the bus was made. That year, I was in fourth grade. That's, that's a long time ago. So not only have these decals been on this bus for that long, but the amount of dirt caked on top of these decals is insane. The day we purchased the bus, it was shiny, bright, white and clean. And ever since then, we have not washed the bus. So the dirt that's caked onto this bus has been there since day one for us. And it's the dirt from the whole construction process, from traveling cross country a couple times, up to Alaska, down through Mexico, all the way through Central America to Panama. And now's the time that we're finally taking these decals off and starting fresh. So while Kaylee's working on taking off all the stickers, I'm up here and I'm getting rid of all the rust from our roof rack. We built this roof rack a little over a year ago at our friend Nick and Nicole's place up in Washington. And I remember how much stress we were under at the time because we had two weeks to do the work in their garage and we ended up staying for four. So we were kind of rushing through stuff, cutting corners, and that's been a lot of the history of this bus. A lot of this bus has been built in a rush because the first time it was all about building as fast as we could so we could get traveling. And then the next time was we only had four weeks to spend. So I'm excited to finally have the time to do a lot of these things right and try to make this bus beautiful because that's the least that Jenny deserves at this point. Look at this, you guys. It's the epic standoff between Lola and the cows. Lola's part beagle, part border collie. And I think that border collies are like a, like a type of like shepherd, right? I think they like corral the animals, I'm not sure. Look at you guys, get in a circle. <laughs> She's having a lot of fun. So we've been traveling through Mexico and Central America now for a little over a year. And to be honest, you guys, one of the biggest challenges that I've had is learning Spanish. And it's actually something that I'm pretty insecure about because I'm not one to learn something like that, like a language, quickly. It's something that I need to constantly repeat over and over again for it to stick in my mind. So a company called Babbel actually just recently reached out to us and it's a language education app. They asked us if we wanted to try out their app and if we liked it, then in return we would do a collaboration with them. So for me, that was a total no-brainer. So I've been using Babbel for a little over a month now and to be honest guys, I have never had a tool that has helped me so much in learning a language. With the busy lifestyle that we live, the versatility of the app is one of my favorite things because you can literally do it while you're just hanging out at home, while you're sitting in a coffee shop, or just walking around town. So learning to speak Spanish better has allowed me to be more independent in the smallest situations, such as ordering food at a restaurant. Me gustaría and arroz para llevar. And that is Are going and ordering some fruits from our fruit guy. Tres. Cuatro. Gracias. Yeah. Gracias, amigo. Okay, hasta luego. And it's been so, so, so helpful and empowering because now that we're living here, I want to be able to do these things on my own. So if you're interested in learning a new language and you want to try out Babbel's professionally designed courses, you can click the link in our description below. And if you sign up for three months, you get three months for free. So it's time we get our little green thumb on and plant all our brand new plants and trees. Officially time for us to get our hands in the ground. We've been waiting for this moment for so long. We're getting our hands in the dirt. We're gonna plant some trees. So 
just want to officially welcome you guys to our fruit forest. It's not much of a forest right now, it's just more of like little tiny shrubs. But one day it'll be a forest. And a big part of permaculture is getting multiple uses out of things. So not only will this be a great spot for the for the uh, for citrus trees, they look great here, but it'll also be a nice wind block. So the wind comes from that direction. And when these get big enough, they'll block us from the wind because we're gonna build a deck out here on our bus. And these trees will make it so it's not nice and windy. We spent the rest of the evening planting our new citrus trees and we're so excited about them. I just am so excited to be able to walk out of the bus, come down, pick an orange, pick a lemon, pick a lime, pick some berries. We're really working hard on getting the bus ready to paint, but just like anything, it's going slower than we expected. The stickers to get them off is really tough and I wish we could use a heat gun because then we could just get them right off, but that's one of the challenges of being off grid is you don't have unlimited electricity. We just have the little bit of solar from the bus. So we did as much as we could and then the sun set. It was kind of cool. We got to see all the lights of the town light up and we saw some stars for the first time and we're just getting so excited to spend our first night up here. It's gonna be within a week. And then this morning I came back up a little before eight. It's been a beautiful morning and I got back to grinding the rust off the rack because I'm hoping we can at least paint that today. And then my drill died. And this is another challenge about being off grid is just trying to charge tools because we can't use any power tools yet. All those things are coming, the solar's coming, but it's just about being efficient. So now I decided to go on poop patrol. That's one of the good things about having cows for neighbors. And I got some delicious cow manure and I know our trees, our citrus trees, are gonna love it. So I'm just going around getting these guys nice and fertilized and uh, excited to watch these guys just have a blast in this volcanic soil and fresh cow poop. Something that's great about farming here is there's already so much food that's growing around this land. Check this out. This right here is a raspberry plant. And this crazy looking leaf, look at the purple. This is wild eggplant, or it's also known as turkey berry. Now I'm still very new into plant identification. I really don't know a heck of a lot. So I'm sure there's even more. But those are kind of like the two that I figured out so far. And what I'm gonna do is transplant these. Well, I'm just gonna transplant the raspberry for now. And I'm gonna put it over there because I also got some blackberries. Ah. Oh, okay. Check this guy out, you guys. Look at this guy that came with me. Look at this thing. You see that guy? Look at that caterpillar. That's something that we've been loving about here is all the insects are different. Like, they like these golden little, they look like ticks, but they're not ticks. And they're like bright gold. Feels like we're in like a Dr. Seuss book or something sometimes when we're here. I'd like to introduce you guys to what I call, what I've decided to call just five seconds ago, the Berry Bush Highway. So over here, we have our blackberries. And here's the wild raspberries. And you can see this one, they already got some raspberries on it ready to go. And up in here, all these are all wild too. So I decided to plant it here because, because naturally they're already growing here. There's already a bunch of wild raspberries there. And why here and why I'm calling it a highway is this is gonna be the walkway from all the cars are gonna be parked over there. That's gonna be our little like car park. And then and we're gonna be able to walk in path to the bus. So an another idea with permaculture is you garden and you put your plants in a way that you excrete as little energy as possible. So every day while we're walking to our bus, uh, we'll be able to garden or just be able to inspect and be able to watch what's going on, see if the plants are being happy, maybe water them a little bit if they need it, pick, and pick any of the berries along the way, where if we planted them all the way down there, there's much less like, likely chance that we're gonna spend as much time there. So the idea is to plant around where we're already gonna be walking and being. Just came down to town and grabbed my important cargo. <laughs> We have a really important meeting we need to have. I'll tell you about it. I'm feeling on privacy. Thank you. Nice seeing you, man. Good to see you too. Well, I thought this was the dry season. This is like New England weather. I really wish we were capturing all this water right now. <laughs> Look at how much it's raining. This all could be going into our water tanks right now. So we just found some cover to try and escape the rain, but we just had a meeting with our architect Hans and we went over the changes that we made. Mm -hmm. So the first big change is we're gonna change the whole front of the house to be all glass. Mm -hmm. So we have an awesome view. Mm -hmm. 
we have an awesome view out of the cows. The next big change that we're gonna make is basically change the whole staircase to just be a ladder so we can save space on that and then have a double-sided kitchen instead of just one side. Yeah, so the ladder is gonna give us, it's not gonna be like a climb-up ladder, it's gonna be like a really steep staircase right. so you can still walk up it. Right. And then, yeah, double-sided kitchen, which will give us more kitchen space. And then the last change, we want a fireplace. <laughs> so we're gonna get a little wood-burning stove. Cause it gets freaking cold up there. It's like refreshing. It's No, it's a good cold. It's yeah, like, it's like, I just want a little fire going in the corner. Totally. Kaylee's made Brittany addicted to Organica now. As yeah. you can see, three things of ice cream. And she's made me addicted to these. <laughs> Sugar-free soda. This is very Kaylee-like. How you get your fix without all the bad my, stuff? My wife has an well. addiction. My yeah. wife has an addiction. The sweets? I, I think we all do at this point. Healthy sweets, thanks to Organica. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys, that's about it. It's a washout. <sighs> Stuck in the house for the rest of the day, <clears throat> but we have some good news. Some very exciting news. I figure we'll end this vlog, this permaculture, gardening, homestead, homestead. themed vlog, <laughs> with a little update, and that is our, our little babies. Look at these! Don't worry, Lola. You're still our first baby. I love you. I love you! But back to these. <laughs> Look at how much these have grown. Especially... Look at that, Lola. Especially the green beans! <laughs> Look how big these guys Look are. These things. This has been one week. A little over a week. It's like nine days. I can't believe they've grown that much. I would think they'd just start sprouting around now. But they were mm -hmm. sprouting in one day. And all of this soil we took from up at our land. So that just shows you how freaking fertile that shiz is. It's fertile, it's volcanic soil, it's ready to be planted. And we're so excited to plant these. these we're gonna get, be getting these in the ground real, real soon. Yeah. The, carrot, the carrots are taking a little bit. Yeah, I've been that's normal. That's what it said on the seed. I've been trying to tell you that we need to put them out in the sun, I think. No, it says 10 to 20 days until you even see anything. I know, but all these other ones are crushing it. I know, but all the rest come sooner, trust me. All right, be the, patient We're gonna give them five carrots. more days, if not, we're giving them some more sun. Patience with the carrots, young grasshopper. I think the carrots want some more sun, but. That'll be a conversation for another day. <laughs> Thank you guys for following along with this one. Thank you so much. We're so excited to freaking, whoa, you're, you're going real real close it's up a, on my face. It's a wide angle lens, kid. You can get I know, it nice but it feels though. like it's so close. All right, all right, all right. We're just really excited to keep going on this, on this project, get the bus all set so we can move in and really get a feel for living up on our land and really diving deep into some bigger projects. The next project, is starting real soon. We're probably going to be doing the bus and building the shed at the same time. Yeah. And we're going to be buying a generator and a welder in the next video, mm -hmm. which is going to be a blast to have some power finally up on the land. So this is where we let you guys go. That's all we got. We'll see, see you, you next time. See you next time.